Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of what you are doing in our life. We thank you, Lord, because of what you will still continue to do. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, as we are here this morning, we pray. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, as you have caught us all aware of the time, Lord, you will not come to our, caught us all aware on your second coming in Jesus' name. And your name is, go, is going to be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's open our aim to M151. M151. S one five
Praise the Lord. Let us be seated. I welcome everyone of us to today's study. Today we worship. I pray that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to meet the Lord in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been doing all what we can do to follow him. At the end of our race, I do not know you. You will not be our portion in Jesus' name. For the sake of those people who may be watching us online, and then or for the sake of the emphasis, I want to remind us that by the grace of the Lord, we shall have our Bible study our Monday Bible study tomorrow by 6.50 to 8.30. And do not let us forget. Do all what you can do to invite as many people as possible. So, and the God is going to help us as we are doing so in Jesus' name. Our pastor is going to be around by the grace of the Lord. And uh, I want us to know uh, it's a real privilege for some of us that come from Nigeria, we know how important he is. For him to be here is the abundant grace upon us. I don't want us to misuse, to misuse it. I was surprised because what I asked from him is that, Pastor, when are you going to visit us? I said, oh, Pastor Matthew, I will come and use four days in your house. You know, it's really, really a surprise uh, package from the Lord. And God is going to help us as we are doing so in Jesus' name. For maybe after this service, because this service is going to be very, very short, uh, in preparation. And then please, every one of us, we just need to sacrifice whatever we have, we have to be, to prepare for him. The, uh, the, the reason is this. If a President Trump is saying he's coming now, I know that we are going to forgive all what we want to do, or if it is uh, during the time of Obama. So please, let us close our eyes to anything and let God reward us for honoring him. And God is going to honor us in Jesus' name. Please. Um, uh, maybe after the meeting, or now, the only preparation I've just made, I know we are going to come to tonight, I am Brad Stephen. We make arrangement of where he is going to stay, as a man to man, or what he's going to need, what we need that is be okay for him. Maybe let us do that after the the meeting, after the service, so that God is going to help us. And we are doing so in Jesus' name. For let us bring our tithe and offering, and then do not let us forget that we are going to have a. Uh, our prayer meeting on Thursday and as we are doing so God is going to bless us abundantly in Jesus name and the grace of the Lord will be sufficient to us in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray our mighty father we glorify your name we thank you Lord because you are God we thank you Lord because on whom you are and who you will still continue to be Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We are here this morning, Father. We bring this token offering. Let it be accepted before you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord. Let us, we are going to listen to today's message. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, you will see Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We shall quickly listen to pastor message. In that pastor message, there is a choir message. A choir message. So we don't need to play our own choir. So we will listen to both of them. God will help us as we are doing so in Jesus' name. S one five one. Yeah. 
Father, we thank you very much for this privilege. We thank you because you've called us together. We're here not by accident. We are people of purpose, and we know you have a plan for our lives. Therefore, Lord, we pray that today you'll reach out to everyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you meet us at the point of our need. Amen. I pray you speak to me myself. And I pray you speak to everyone here too, Amen. so that none of us will go back empty-handed. Say what exactly you want us to hear, Amen. and lead us into your own blessing. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Today, I'm talking to you on blessing, but uh, I'm uh, approaching the blessing in a particular way. Again, you understand. Whenever I study the Bible, I really study. And I check up the word uh, blessing. And I discover that the word blessing was a very common word in the Old Testament. Now, you know the Bible has two parts. You will excuse my kind of mathematical approach. 
uh, you have two eyes and you have two legs and you have two hands and you have two kidneys and two lungs and the Bible has two parts to you. One on the left hand side, when you open your Bible, your Old Testament will be on the left and your New Testament will be on the right. And uh, the Old Testament uh, has I'll give you some figures because how can I talk to you without giving you a feel of mathematics? I think you need it. <laughs> and uh, if you hated mathematics when you were at school, I don't know what you are going to do today. Well, you see, we have 66 books in the Bible. And uh, 66 is uh, 2 times 3 times 11. And uh, with the, that means that's a multiple of 3. And in the Old Testament, we have 39 books. That means 3 and uh, 9. And uh, in the New Testament, you have 27. That means 3 times 9. So if you just remember those uh, two uh, figures, numbers 3 and 9, put one behind the other, you have 39. Multiply them, you have 27. And then you have the New Testament. But now I look at the Old Testament. And I find that in the first book of the Old Testament, I have the word blessing. I look at the last book of the Old Testament, and I find the word blessing. And that kind of attracts me. I feel that, well, if there is blessing in the first book, and there is blessing in the last book, it's talking to me about blessing from beginning to the end. And then I check up the false uh, reference to that blessing that I checked up, in the Old Testament, that's in Genesis chapter 12, it says, I will bless you. But it doesn't stop there. It says, I will make you a blessing. And when I look at that, I say, that's a promise given to an individual. I look at the last uh, reference in the Old Testament that talks about blessing. And it says, I will pour my blessing upon you. And that's talking to a nation. And you see the progression of the blessing now is going from, I will bless you, an individual. I will pour a blessing upon you as a nation. And between the individual and the nation, you have the family. And so you also have a blessing for the family. And you are here as an individual. The Lord has a blessing waiting for you. And you are here representing the nation, an official in the nation. The Lord has a blessing waiting for a nation. And you are here representing your family. Uh, the Lord has a blessing uh, waiting for every one of our families in Jesus' name. Now, it says to the first man, that's Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. It says, I will make you a blessing. That means I'll give you blessing, but that's not enough. I'll make you like a channel, a reservoir of blessing. And then the blessing will carry on in your life. In fact, it says the people that are associated with you, the people that blessed you will be blessed. That's saying something. It means that even the blessing will get near to your friend, will get to the people that are very close to you, very near to you. That's the confidence I have when I pray for a father. I'm able to pray for his wife, even the wife is not there. On the basis that the blessing that comes upon him will come upon his wife. That's the basis on which we can pray for the children. Because, you know, if the blessing is coming to the father, he is the head of the home, representing the whole family. Then there will be blessing coming upon the children. And that's why I can confidently tell you, if you are blessed, your children are blessed. Yeah. And your wife is blessed. And your husband is blessed. And I believe that the blessings of God will never dry up in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. And then as I look at Malachi, it says, I will pour. I will pour. And from my little knowledge, what you pour must be abundant. It means that if you are going to pour that thing, it's not just a, a drop. It's not a trickle. It's not something at the lower part of the bucket. It's something that the Lord is going to pour upon you. And it means that it is going to overflow. In fact, in that passage, in uh, the last reference of the blessing, it says, I will so pour the blessing upon you, you will not have enough room to be able to take the blessing. And uh, you have not got enough yet. I believe that you will get the blessing of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, now, blessing at the beginning, blessing at the end. Then I'm asking a question, O oh Lord, if that is so, why isn't everybody blessed? Because I look at the practical, I see what's in the word of God, 
and I see that God is not a partial God, and I know he wants to bless everybody, but I see the practical around me, and I see that not everybody is blessed. And then I'm asking the question, oh Lord, why isn't everybody blessed? And I know it's not the fault of God because he's a perfect God. His promises are yes and amen. And he cannot change and he will not change. He said, I have said it, will it not come to pass? I have spoken, will I not make it good? Because everything he has said, he has the power, he has the ability to make it good and to fulfill it. And then I look at the word of God and I see then that there is a condition. There is a condition for the blessing of God. And I find as I look at the word of God, the conditions are not very difficult. In fact, the conditions are almost like no condition at all. Uh, because as I look at the word of God, I see that God commands you to do something and then he turns around and then whispers in your ears, you just be willing, I'm the one to even carry out the command on your behalf. Because I will come and dwell in you, and I will empower you and strengthen you, and what I am telling you to do, I am the one that will do it again through you. What he commands, he promises to effect, even in our lives. And therefore, he looks, you look at the, uh, the, the conditions, and the conditions are not difficult at all, and yet the condition is there. And as uh, the condition is there, you need to look at what the condition is and then you make yourself available to fulfill that condition and then I can assure you that there will be blessing for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And when I talk about blessing, I talk about uh, all kinds, all kinds of blessings. You may write it down, I have no time to read that now in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and you will find all kinds of blessings. A spiritual blessing, physical blessing, material blessing, in your social life, in your family life, everywhere you just find blessings running after you, following after you. But what then is the condition? In um, Second Chronicles chapter 7, Second Chronicles chapter 7, reading from verse 14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their land, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Here you find something that uh, you are referring to the children of Israel to start with. You can look at the lives of the children of Israel. And uh, if you only read the first two chapters of Judges, you'll find because those two chapters contain a lot of generation. This generation did this, this happened, this happened, then they prayed and this happened. Cycle in their lives. And that's what you will always find as you look at history. You will find that from one generation to the other, history repeats itself. You will find if you look at our nation here, whatever may be happening now, there is a cause, there is an effect. And it is a cause, effect, a kind of thing. And therefore, you will find that in your little life too as an individual, what happens to the individual happens to the family. What happens to the family happens to the nation. Uh, you, you know that, for example, our science teachers will tell you, anything you want to know about the whole bucket of water, you can learn from a drop of water. Scientists will tell you that. You don't need the whole ocean. To be able to tell the chemical kind of configuration on the whole ocean, take a drop, and what you learn scientifically from that drop of water, you are going to learn about it's going to be general for all the, to the whole ocean. And it's the same thing that's just a specimen. And you as an individual, you are a specimen, a specimen for the family, and the family representing the whole nation. And as history repeats itself in Israel, so it does in this nation, and so it does in every nation. And here is how it works in the lives of individuals. It says, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, I find that is what Israel always had to do. Whenever they had missed the blessing of God, they had to come down from the ivory tower of sin, we are Abraham's seed. And because we're Abraham's seed, automatically we ought to have the blessing. They remember that they must humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. And if you look at your life, it's the same thing you will find. 
you will find that God has a controversy with you. I deliberately use that word, very strong word, so you will know the seriousness of the matter. If I just say, well, God has a question he wants to ask you, that will be mild. If I say, God has something he's not happy with in your life, that will be true, but that will be very mild. When I say, God has a controversy with you, you wake up, you say, what? Controversy? How is it that bad? Is that bad because God hates sin? He hates evil. And experience tells you, and life tells you, and the Bible tells you, everything concurring agreeing together that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says we have sinned. And we know we have sinned. Our consciences tell us we have sinned. And because of sin, where there is sin, there is punishment. You know that at home, your little children, they do something wrong, you punish them. And you know that in the nation, uh, somebody does something criminal, and the nation, the government, punishes such individual, or we say, the law punishes such individual. And you find that even in international circles, somebody has done something wrong, he runs to another nation, by the kind of international relationship, you will still be able to punish the crimes that people commit. And therefore, you know that punishment comes after wrongdoing. And uh, that's the principle that God has implanted in the human nature. And God himself, he practices that. He says, we have sinned. We have gone against him. And because of that, the blessing that shall come upon our lives, he withdraws that blessing. Not because he doesn't love us, but because we don't love ourselves enough to live right and to do that which is right. But now he says, we can change this thing, we can turn it around, the blessing is still waiting for you, and I can still give you that blessing, and therefore, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and what does it mean when it says and pray? It means that you will go beyond yourself and you will say, yes, I know I need something from God. And I know that you are going to give this thing to me if I will talk to you. And you talk to God. And that's what we're going to do when I finish uh, very shortly. I'm going to make you to talk to God. If you are not on talking terms, I'm going to um, advise and counsel you that we bring a reconciliation between you and God. Why is it you are not on talking terms with God? How is it you are fighting with God? How is it that you say, no, I don't want to talk to him? You must talk to God. And talking to God means you are praying. And when you are praying to effect a reconciliation between you and God, how do you talk to him? You say, well, I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry I did that. My conscience tells me that I shouldn't have done that, but I'm sorry. And you know, the moment you say you are sorry, God says, well, that's all right then. That's all I was waiting for. Now your sins are forgiven. Now you are pardoned. And uh, the problem will not be there again. Then he says, if you'll seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, the things you have been doing that were wicked, the things you have been doing that were not right, you will turn away from those things and then you come to the Lord. Then God says, I will. I will forgive their sins. Uh, there is no time, but, uh, you know, this is what I do because I love uh, research and I love to study. And I've taken time to find out in the Bible many, many times that God said, I will. And there's one conclusion I can tell you. And uh, i just tell you the, the result of uh, the finding out in the Word of God. You know, when he was talking to Abraham, he said, I will. And you know what I've discovered? Abraham is gone now. Everything God said when he said, I will, he has done everything. There was another man. God was talking to Moses. And in talking to Moses, God said, I will. And then, dash, dash, dash. He told him what he will do. Moses is gone now. Everything God said after he said, I will, I discover he has done it now. And he was talking to David. David actually wanted to build um, a temple for the Lord. And uh, God says, thank you very much. I will allow your son to build that, but you will not build that. In any case, because of what you said you will do, let me tell you now what I will do. And then God said, I will. And I discovered that everything God said I will unto David, he's done everything to you. 
and have uh, studied as far as Ezekiel and many parts there God just said I will I will I will and I found out in the other parts of the Bible whether he did it or he did not and I found that that he did and when you come to the New Testament uh, there is another way in the New Testament of saying I will every time Jesus said verily verily that's the equivalent New Testament equivalent of I will certainly certainly surely surely without a shadow of doubt this is what I will do and every time God Almighty tells a human being and he says I will I believe and I know you believe he will do it Amen. and uh, as we're here this afternoon see the I will of God he says I will forgive their sins well if that is the case why then would you not come and talk to the Lord about it and he says, once you come, I'll say, Lord, I'm sorry about that. I know that wasn't right. I shouldn't have gone that direction. I shouldn't have said that. And God said, that's all right. I told you I will. And even Satan cannot change my decision to forgive you. I will forgive you. And then it says, I will heal their land. Remember, this applies to the nation. Remember, it applies to the family. Remember, it applies also to the individual. And uh, I've seen the Lord doing this. That's why uh, when I pray, I just remember in my mind, I said, well, God said, I will heal their land. I was um, preaching somewhere in Britain. And uh, one man came to me. And uh, yeah, that's, it wasn't, that's not deeper life. It, it's a Pentecostal church where there were about 2,000 ministers together. And this man came, one of the people there. He said, uh, can you pray with me? I said, I'll gladly do that. He said, hey, would you pray for me to, uh, for God to give me a wife? I looked at him, I said, you've never married? Oh, he said, he got married before. Oh, I said, hey, how is it we're going to pray for another wife? Oh, he said, something happened. And I said, tell me about it. He said, I had poison in my blood. And the whole blood system in my body was poisoned. And the doctor gave me a medical report and said that this man could go anytime because uh, the whole system is poisoned. My wife saw that, and my wife said, I can't stay with a dead man. And therefore, packed all our load and went away. And you know I've not died yet, therefore I need another wife. Uh, therefore, let us pray, if you can pray with me before you go back to your country, that God will give me another wife. Uh, so I said, can I, I will pray, but can I change that prayer a little bit? He's still praying for wife, but... Uh, can I pray that the other wife will come back? Oh, he said, don't, don't waste your time and pray on that one because there's poison in my body and the whole system is totally poisoned and uh, whatever you pray here, that woman will not come back. I said, let's uh, put a, I like experiment uh, because you know, that's what I've been doing all my life. I said, let's uh, put now, let's put it in a position of an experiment. I will pray for you that the whole blood system in your body will totally change. And then you will go to the medical doctor. Don't tell the medical doctor what happened. Just tell the medical doctor to test you. Then he will tell you what has happened. Then you tell him who has done it. And uh, so he went, we prayed and he went to the medical doctor. And he said, doctor, doctor, here am I. Can you give me another test? And the doctor said, what for? Why are we wasting time? Uh, we know we already have your case history. He said, yes, let's waste a little time, uh, even if it's just to confirm whatever it was there before or whatever is no more there. And so the doctor was talked into it and he made a medical report and they examined him, every cell in his body. And he discovered that now there was no poison at all in the whole blood system. And uh, so the doctor said, how did this happen? And then he told him, it's Jesus that has done it. And then I told him, I said, when you get that new medical report, don't do any other thing. Send it to your wife if you know the address. And he did just that. And uh, the woman read the medical report, new medical report, and saw the signature of an authorized, qualified doctor here. And the following week, that woman packed that load and came back, back to the husband. And uh, so I went the following year for, the, for that uh, conference of their denomination. And uh, so the man came to me after one of the messages and said, uh, 
uh, pastor so and so uh, do you recognize me i said no because i meet many people i'm the one that came uh, last year when you came for the conference and i told you that uh, my wife had gone because of the poison in my blood i said yes i remember and uh, he said here is i'm glad to introduce to you mrs uh, so and so and then i shook hands with the wife i said you are the woman you came back tell me about it and she smiled and told me her own part of the testimony you know god is able to do all things i said god is able to do all things uh, because he said i will that's what i stand upon well we're in abuja i think it was uh, now 1994 and uh, this uh, lady had carried hunchback for 34 years and you know, I'm, I used to doubt uh, many things uh, when I was still under my principal, but I'm not under, her, under him anymore now. I'm under another principal now, the head of the church. And uh, the head of the church, my new principal now, he tells me that with the Heavenly Father, all things are possible. And so now I, I act as if I didn't go to school. When somebody has hunched back now, I say, can we pray about it? And if you have gone to school before, you don't pray about hunchback. But I just forget all that kind of uh, thing they pumped into me because I've got another information now. Information from above. And it was September 1994 when in Abuja there and this uh, lady had uh, got hunchback on her back for 34 years. Uh, she had that uh, hunchback at the age of two. And I said, now we're going to pray. She had little running stomach. And so she put her hand on her stomach because she didn't believe that God was going to deal with hunchback. And I just said, we're going to pray for everything. Go ahead, her hunchback, whatever it is, lay your hand there. And uh, she didn't listen to that, but the little tummy ache, she believed that God could heal the tummy ache. Uh, but the hunchback, uh, well, when we get to heaven, there will be no hunchback in any way. Uh, so while we were praying, an invisible hand came and was stretching her. And then by the time we said the final amen, the hunchback are totally gone. Because God said, I will. And that I will, Satan cannot change it. We were in Zahil some few years ago, and that was my first crusade in Zahil. And while we were there, they brought a woman dying with AIDS. They brought her right from the hospital, and she was like a dry stick, very, very lean. And I tell you, the national network news of the television uh, people, they were there that night, and uh, while I was preaching, they stretched that uh, woman right in front. And you talk about the power of God. And you talk about giving testimony. While you are preaching like that and you are saying God can do anything and God will do everything. And they say, okay, finish preaching and, you know, let's have a test case here. And uh, so eventually we finished the message. And uh, we didn't have time because the uh, field we were using, uh, the government had given us time and had said, this is the time you will close. And the Zyron there, they were telling me that we have 10 minutes more. So we really didn't have time for long prayer. But I knew God said, I will. And since God said, I will, I know you can count on that and stand on that. So I said, whatever problem you have, let us pray now. Lay your hands upon yourself. And uh, so I said, in the name of Jesus, whatever the problem may be, you problem, I command you, get out of the place. You are healed in Jesus' name. And, uh, you know, we said, Amen. At that time, I didn't understand French. I didn't know what the interpreter was saying. I only believed he was saying the right thing, but the, the people said, Amen. Then they told us, our time is up, our time is up. While we're going out of the field, the woman on the stretcher got up herself and was totally healed. And even the officials that said our time was up, they ran back to the field to look at the woman. Everybody ran back, and then the television uh, network, they took everything and they relayed it to the whole nation the following day. You see, that's the power of God, and it's because God said, I will. We were in, uh, we were in uh, Zambia, and uh, the uh, president of Zambia at that time, Kaunda, it's Chiluba that is there now, and uh, you know, I've been with Chiluba, I think, uh, a few times too. Uh, when I first uh, went and Kaunda was there, at that time, if you know the philosophy of Kaunda, you know that, uh, you know, Christianity, prayer and all that, you know that that's not his first choice. But uh, we were there. And uh, the newspaper, two people, they were there. The television crew, they were there. I mean, television was the government. 
They wanted to see the, uh, you know, the lie, the deception of all these things we are doing. And uh, so I said tonight, and we're giving only one day, you know. They wouldn't give us all the four days we wanted. Only one day. They said, everything you want to do, one day is enough. And I said, that's all right. Take only one day. God can do in one day what men cannot do in 50 years. And uh, so we had uh, just the one day. And uh, we finished the message. I said, I was going to pray for the sick now. And all those uh, media people, they went to stand by one man. Because that man, 80 years of age, he had the lephantiasis in there. The legs were so big he couldn't wear normal pair of trousers. And then he was also blind. And I said I was going to pray now. They didn't look at any other sick man there. All the newspaper people there, they stayed by that man. They said, today, today we will see. And you know, God likes challenge. And uh, God was able to meet up with any challenge. And uh, so I said... Uh, I like to start with uh, something swollen, something visible that people will see and they will know that we are not making up anything and we are not deceiving anybody. So I started with uh, praying for the people that have elephantiasis and whatever it is and immediately we prayed, that thing just went down like a balloon. And the newspaper people themselves, they saw that. And I didn't know they were watching that man. It just happened that I said, the next category of people I'm going to pray for are the blind people. And he still stayed by that man. Immediately we prayed, the blind eyes just got opened. And uh, President Kaunda knew about it and invited myself and my team uh, to a walking luncheon uh, the following day. And uh, we sat down together there talking about Christ, talking about miracle, talking about wonderful, wonderful things the Lord has done. Uh, because God said, I will, our God will never fail. You don't have any problem. Why do you think you have problem? Only Satan has problem. You have the promise of God, not a problem. And the promise of God is able to take away the problem in your life. Uh, let me give you the last testimony and then I'll be done. Maybe I will, I will give uh, extra, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, when you are taking an exam and they say, choose only for... Uh, for the Psalms to solve, if you solve for and you have time, maybe you can do an extra one just to know that you know what you are talking about. So I'll give you one, and if you respond properly to the one I'm giving you, I might add another one too. <laughs> so we were uh, here now in, uh, in Ivory Coast. And in Ivory Coast, uh, praise the Lord that uh, we were reaching to Burkina Faso. And we wanted the president to even come. Well, we, we wanted everybody to hear the gospel. The president of Burkina Faso could not come to every coast to the crusade we were holding there. So what he did was to send the minister of religion. And the minister of religion, when, when we say minister of religion, you know what that means. It means uh, somebody that knows a lot of theory but no practical. And uh, so he came to Ivory Coast and he tendered the letter from the government of Burkina Faso and he said, you wrote to our president and uh, here am I, I'm representing our president and I'm the minister of religion there. And we treated him like a minister of religion. We made him to sit on the platform every night when we had a crusade. And God did something marvelously wonderful. We, we were there that night and there was a woman that had been blind for 60 years. She was blind at the age of 12. At that time, she was now 72 years of age. She was dancing at the school. And uh, one of the villagers just went there at the age of 12, many, many years ago, and rubbed hands on her face. As if she was appreciating her dancing, she went blind, blind instantaneously. And for those 60 years, she had carried that blindness. And also, the uh, World Health Organization officer, uh, WHO officer uh, that had known about the case treating her was also in the, on the crusade ground that night and also a, a nephew 35 years of age who said that uh, when he was born he met mama in that blind condition all those people were there and the minister of religion from Burkina Faso was on the platform and there I was I preached the salvation message and then I gave the altar call after giving the altar call and people responded, we prayed for salvation. Now I said, God said, he will, he, he will forgive you. After that, he will heal the land. We're now going to pray and God will heal you. And uh, then I said I was going to pray for the blind. And God worked it out. That woman that had been blind for 60 years, 
uh, her eyes got opened. When the eyes got opened, we had enough time to give testimony. The woman came up. She was not the only one that came up. The medical doctor working with the WHO, World Health Organization, also came up to say, yes, I know this woman. And uh, she's a uh, case we've been dealing with. The 35-year-old uh, man came forward and said, yes, this uh, in our family. I know her very well. And the uh, minister of religion from Burkina Faso was seeing all that. And uh, so he went back to his country. And uh, then they wrote from there and said they wanted a crusade like we had in Ivory Coast. They wanted it in Burkina Faso too. And the beauty of it in Burkina Faso is that... Uh, uh, they said that the deeper life uh, there should not take care of my accommodation, feeding, whatever it was that the government was going to take care. And they gave all the hotel rooms. And uh, they even gave us more hotels than the people we went with. And uh, they said, why didn't you come with more people? Then they cleared the ground. We didn't pay for the ground. Then they cleared, they used the government uh, caterpillar and everything to t clear the ground and to make all the uh, conveniences and everything. And uh, then because uh, there was a difficulty in Burkina Faso at that time, they gave us armed soldiers parading all that ground that nobody will do anything. And then at night, while I'll be sleeping in the room, there will be government soldiers with all their arms and everything in front of the door because God said, I will. Yeah. And that I will is still working. And it is now your turn. You can put it to test and the will of God will work in your life. Amen. And you know if you have seen, because it's not a strange thing that you have seen. All I've seen have come short of the glory of God. He said, I will. Then he will forgive you. You will go out of this place as if you never sinned in your life. And Satan will say, he is a sinner. And God will say, I don't know about that. I find, I look at my record, all the sins are taken away. And then you smile, you point to the devil, you are the sinner, I'm no more a sinner. And then all the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life. Do you know you can carry miracle home? I said, do you know you can carry miracle home? Why don't you rise up if you can so we can pray together? And you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I know there is blessing in the word of God. And that blessing is going to come upon my life. Blessing from beginning to the very end. Remember there are two parts of the blessing. Number one, he will forgive your sin. Then number two, he will heal your land. He will give you miraculous healing. And I want to talk to you. If you know you've done something that you just know that God will not be happy about, that's not strange. That's almost like everyone. And you know you want the forgiveness of the Lord. And you want him to give you new internal strength so that by the grace of God now, uh, things will be totally different. I just want you to quietly raise up your hand. There will be no embarrassment for anyone. God bless you. Just raise up your hand and say, yes, I need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Just uh, as you raise up your hand, just quietly tell the Lord and say, Lord, I know you are good, but I'm bad. I know you are loving, but in the past my heart has not just manifested that kind of love towards you. I've not done right before. I've done bad before. I cannot begin to recount all the bad things I've done. But I've heard from your word that you said, I will forgive. I'm standing on that word, I will. I will. And I know you will not change. And I'm asking that you forgive me because I believe that Jesus died for me. And that settles it. It's that simple. That settles it. Just tell the Lord, I'm sorry. You said you will forgive me. Please forgive me. I'm going to pray with you now. And you'll just accept that it's done. Because he said so. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our beloved brothers and sisters. Thank you for the forgiveness you have given. You said you will. And neither circumstance nor Satan can change that word of certainty. Therefore, Lord, I pray that according to your promise, 
you forgive every sin they ever committed since they were born up till this present moment in Jesus name whisper to their hearts that you love them that you are forgiving them that you have cleansed them and that because Jesus Christ bore their punishment they will not bear that punishment again thank you because I know you have done it I know you have forgiven them in Jesus name we pray amen amen if you raise up your hand our brothers and sisters would give you a card and uh, you just fill that card and you return it back uh, to the brothers sisters distributing those cards now before you go we are going to pray that if there is any problem in your family any problem in your life any sickness that the lord will touch you and the lord will heal you and if the problem is not really with you but with your wife at home even though your wife is not here you'll indicate on behalf of your wife and then we will pray and i believe the power of god will touch your wife at home if it's your husband at home we will pray and the lord will touch your husband too your children too they can receive of that same blessing of the lord because god said i will and i will not fail so if you have any personal problem you please raise up your hand or if it's uh, a friend a neighbor a relative husband wife child anyone parent having the problem you raise up your hand and we'll pray father in the name of jesus we thank you very much for your goodness we thank you for your power i bless your name because i know you will never fail i thank you for all our brothers and sisters here who are believing you and looking up to you and they believe that this problem will not remain and we believe together with them the problem will not remain therefore lord i pray you will touch every one of them you will deliver and heal them in jesus name i pray that the curse in the life of that individual that yoke that curse is broken and you are set free in jesus name i pray oh lord that that deformity in the life of that individual in that family remove it by your mighty power in jesus name i pray that your healing virtue will flow right now into everyone here and all the sicknesses infirmities diseases everything will vanish away in jesus name i pray lord that a definite miraculous touch will be experienced by everyone right now thank you because i know you have answered in jesus name we pray amen i believe the lord has blessed you and why don't you just, just open your eyes and I'm, I'm through but i want i promised you an extra uh, testimony and you know sometimes uh, when we pray like this uh, people say what if we don't believe well i don't know about that but let me tell you this that uh, i went for a crusade at a uh, meeting at Ilori and a university student was uh, brought in there and here she happened to be studying uh, psychology and uh, she had one hand uh, paralyzed and i said now i'm going to pray for the people that have paralysis with that hand whatever it was and uh, so she said i'm not going to allow this man to use psychology on me because uh, i had he was a lecturer before at the university therefore i don't want any psychology i said close your eyes uh, she said not me i said uh, lay your hand upon the place you have the problem she said you are not going to get me i'm not an illiterate and uh, so she didn't do that and i said whether you believe or you don't believe i believe and then i prayed and then the people the rest of the people that believe we said amen i just said paradise sir, paradise leg everything get out of the way and the people were so excited except herself and uh, so after we closed she went back home in the night she had a dream and something came out of that hand in the dream when she woke up the following morning that hand was like the other hand uh, because uh, whether you believe or not god can even work miracle not because of you but in spite of you sit down and enjoy your miracle
Praise the Lord. My friend of you, we, we thank God for being under the ministry of today. Box. Continue to bless us mightfully in Jesus' name. You know, when those prayer was going on and Pastor was praying, I remember those things I asked Almighty God for in my life. And then it took me back to my background. And what made me out all of them? That it is this kind of of prayer uh, and that's what the arrow was telling me i think i've told you is it during the night Fiji that i one of my siblings died and i told arrow i was so but the body was too much on me that what have i done to rescue this particular person from sin when he was still alive I could, I supposed to take three day break from my place of work. I did not take it because my conscience was just too heavy. The second day, I called Arrow and I told him. Then Arrow told me, "Why are you burdening yourself? Why are you let devil push you down? That all of them they have the privilege you have. They cannot tell you that they have never heard the word of the Lord. They heard the word of the Lord." The only thing you do is that you, you, you hook yourself to the word of the Lord and you find yourself where you are today. But they, they neglect it. And I remember recently a lot of things that was happening at home. And then when pastor was praying, I remember. One of the things I made mention in my life, I never thought we are going to listen to this message. But I just want you to see the reason why some people they are having upper hand and why some are lesser with kind of the thing God do this morning you will see one of the things I may promise with in my life is that in, in my town uh, let me mention you may not know it in Ogumosho in Nigeria that there will be a day there will be a revival that I will Solely organized, solely organized. Nobody, only me, will finance it. And GS will just come before GS die. That's just my blood. And then recently, I think I was telling Arrow. The like Arrow said, said something. What about if GS, GS die or something? He said something very, very. Like what about if GS die before you even realize your dream? But recently, the retreats were done in Ogumosho. Some of you, if you look at the, when they advertised that retreat in Ogumosho, you will see what I wrote there, that why God, why you did not let me fulfill my promise? Go and look at it. When you see the, the, that retreat that was organized in Ogumosho, I put it there. Why God, why you did not let me achieve my dream? And then today, I have the privilege, we have the privilege of assisting me, of assisting the judge, of achieving that dream indirectly and that by bring, i wish you know the group connector my wife know him is a lieutenant to the gas so to surrender him said that he is coming here for four days it was a dream before me so uh, do is the way we uh, we uh, we achieve our own dream is quite different from the world that was uh, recently the I, I i shared the testimony of the house that was bought i never expected never expected and i i was just telling god recently that god the part of this house at the, the location of this house this is the time for me to build a church yeah i think this is the first time i'm discussing with anybody They said they will do. I said do whatever you want to do on that house. I, I don't mind. I think it, my brother was more close to me that I always discuss about. I didn't tell him. But that thing was this is high time for me. By the time money comes, they want to do this. They want to do this. But and then in my spirit, I will visualize the land. With the remaining land, 
with the, the with the house with the remembering and I was visualize I was visualizing it that God is a time for me to build the church just the all then two room at the back for offices that's all then look at all those kind, this kind of magic well, so when you see people are being selected just like random look at what happened today just random you never expect this kind of magic message and I pray that God will open everybody's eyes in Jesus' name. The race is not by the winning of the race. It's not by energy. It's not by those people who can, who can run it. My prof, my friend prof, he has been trying to come to you. It is now, yesterday when I was talking, I know what the United States means. Let's thank God for the United States. It is in the United States you are choosing within fasting or wasting a food. Why in other, in other country, what they are thinking is a, let me fast and the little food I have, I will be able to manage it. But you will, you later, you will be thinking of if I throw this food away now, because I want to fast, I'm wasting it. Why can't I just eat without sin without God? Against, against God, I mean wasting food. And then you will not fast. It's in the United States. And God brought everyone first to that country. We need to be thanking God. We need to be we need to be praising God. That's just only few. That's just only that's just only very very few of it. So if you can attach yourself to Almighty God, my dear brother, my dear sister, what God has wanted, group on it comes and you see him, you will not know what I mean. This is a person that I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm online, I don't care. After all, you have seen what I put online, you have seen the messages of the people. When the first one I put about him, about his humility, then the second one I put that God, so I can deserve this. You have seen the, you have seen the message of the people, and how people, people are taking it. This is some, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Apart from doing our, our marriage committee, this is a person I can never come near. Then I become circus. I'm coming to you four days in your house. Do not the, the little beginning. The race is not for how people come. You see how many of my friends they can speak English than me. Go and look at it online. Go and look at it online. Most of my friends. They can speak English than me. They are still struggling. What God achieved for me within two years or even within this year many of them they have been trying it and then he keep telling me that's a little you are with me that's a little you are with me I pray that God will open your spiritual eyes in Jesus name and see that serving God is the most essential it's more dignity I've been always been saying it. Uh, the group coordinator was there when I called Pastor Dada. Now, Pastor Dada, group coordinator is visiting me. And they say, ah, okay, Kiola. Uh, you know that that name is, you know, worldwide. I'm not more than this. It is in this Bible church, the parallel Bible church of Jalotri. God is doing all those kind of things. And he said, oh, so you have been collecting money for big in the church. You, you just, I don't know, a lot of information that have come to him. It is on this old name to the world. You have, you have, you have heard my English. If, if it is English, somebody I'm not, they will have thrown arrow on me. <laughs> you have seen my dressing. If it is dressing, you have seen a lot of <laughs> multicolor. If you can talk of anything, I do not know what is. But by the grace of the Lord, God has been so is I'm, I'm saying this, if I want to pride in Jesus, can let me proud. Let me proud. Not by my energy, not by any other thing. So what I'm saying, look at those, I will, I will make the CD of it. And I will make sure we put it online, although I've been so busy nowadays. But I will make sure I put it online. Go and listen to that message again. Want to sleep. You know, when I was young, what I do is that when I want to sleep, I put all those messages, I put it inside the tape. 
and I, I put it on the on my on my bed and then on my sleeping I will be continuing you know I use automatic play immediately if you rewind again I can't remember I can't forget one that I was listening to that message and I went into trance and I saw myself climbing to the ladder of the and coming down climbing to the ladder you know I see exchanging messages between everyone and the world exchanging messages and the world I, I, I wish I can able to tell you all my journey before I get to this and this just it, it, the, limit, the limitation has not come the, it has not come the only thing was telling me that if I've done this, if I've done this, my child, be careful. That's only one and thing. And, thing, and I know, maybe that's why some things. But he, the only one is that if, uh, this thing, this thing, this thing, be careful of this, of this, of this, of this. God, we answer our prayer in Jesus' name. Let us stick to Him. Let us stick. Forget all the failure of the world. Forget what the people will. <laughs> you know, there was a day I post something on, on online. When you want, I'm very sorry for those of you who are doing nothing. I'm not trying to bring us down. I just want to say that. When you say you want to do a pastor work, they will look at you. But when you say you want to do a lot, they will say, hey, you're going to be bringing money. You know, that's kind of the same people say. But for some of us that stick to the, to the word of the Lord, we will see. And no matter God is going to promote us in Jesus' name. Hold on to your, to, to your, this is a very powerful blessing. And I thank God for every one of you that did. Go and put it down. Be sincere with it. And you will see. And God will surprise every one of us in Jesus' name. And praise the Lord. Let us share the grace, share the grace together. For, sorry. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.